Okay, we're back, guys. Trade Talk, episode 66. Connor, thank you for joining us again. Thank you, Scotty. How are you? I'm well. And, guys, we've, we've had a few technical issues, but we're here. We've got um, the screenshot up sent via email. Thanks to Connor. And before we get into the charts and all the fun Forex stuff, quick risk disclaimer, both Connor and I, we're going through our trades, how we're doing with our live accounts. Uh, it's very important to understand we're not saying to just trade with real money straight away. And, you know, please just take this information we're giving to you as more, you know, like general uh, information about the markets. It's education, entertainment. It's certainly not, um, you know, giving you signals or alerts to trade off. So please don't follow us and blame us if things don't work out. Um, you know, definitely don't trade with real money straight away and be very careful especially this sort of market currently what we're seeing with the US dollar weakening and strengthening and it's pretty um, pretty scary especially on the euro to all the people who are jumping in with the euro just you got to be a little mindful of things could get very crazy so that's that's the risk disclaimer guys now Connor I've got your pound cad uh, kangaroo tail trade up here are you is this one at break even as well the kangaroo tail is that break even, yeah. Yeah, so you got in when it, I see, so that green line, that, that was a uh, support level? The green line's a stop loss. Oh, I see. Green line is now the stop loss. So I got in, there's a red line, it's hard hard to make out, but there's a red line just above uh, you know, oh, where, the, I see. where yes. the hammer is on the kangaroo tail. Yep. yep. And uh, yeah, I got in at the bottom of the kangaroo tail and... Uh, now it's gone through a resistance zone. I've moved it to uh, break even. And then when it gets to the next resistance zone, I'll move it below that. Oh, I see. Nice. Down there. Yeah. And it's been it's been interesting, hasn't it? It sort of collapsed and then it came back up and rallied pretty nicely. And now it's, it is. But that's the thing, guys, that you see. Nothing's really ever just going to go in your favor straight away. So that's our trade there. That's No, that looks really good. So some key points. It's got to be on... Um, so you, you obviously traded off support and resistance. That's very important with the kangaroo tails as well. Yeah. All yeah, right. yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of really exciting stuff to go over today, honestly. Um, the euro's moved a little bit, but now we'll go to... We've got the Aussie CAD daily chart here now, and this one's looking... Not too bad as well, actually. So this was a sell trade as well as a kangaroo Yeah, this sell? is a sell. No, no, this is a sell trade off a box trade. You can see the green box I put around and it broke out and then it reversed back up and now it's just starting to head back down again. Oh, yes. Yeah, I see yeah. that. So that's you look for that nice, uh, for a buy trade, obviously, guys, he's looking for that nice bullish candle to print and then it closes near the high as well. It's not wiki at the top or anything and it's... Uh, yeah, it shot off straight away as well. So, but I mean, some pullbacks happen, don't they, as well? So yeah. that's nothing to be too concerned about. All right, so we'll, yeah. we've touched upon those guys. And is there anything you're looking no, at? No, that's that's all I'm in. I, I, I ate dust on the New Zealand Kiwi. Uh, and that stopped me out really quickly. That stopped me out within a day. And uh, then it shot back up, as the Forex gods like to do to you. They like to be cruel. What I'll do, I, I recall your trade. So kind of got in here, guys, and that big, it's a really nice little candle that pushed through all that sideways action. And then it did. Like you said, it collapsed, and then, bam, it's sort of, that's the market we're in right now. Like That's quite a move, how it moved down and then just shot back up again, like you described there, Connor. <laughs> yeah. And then the thing that most people, beginner traders would do would be just to get back in. I would ill advise you about that. That's You just let that trade go and you move on because it can get very, it might pull back again. It's hard to tell, you know, so now it's sort of not, you know, it's not meeting the rules. So you you can't just trade that just to trade it. But um, it can be cruel trading as well, guys. you got to remember that. Now the Euro, um, I've, I've touched upon a little bit. Now, it had a pretty strong rally, the Euro, uh, last night, London and New York, and now it's sort of stabilized. So I've got the hour chart up. And it's interesting. I mean, if someone's looking for some insight into what to do now, like I sold it on the 8th of May, so um, I'm, I'm going okay. 
So I would just wait, wait and see. Right now it's sideways, it's hard to tell. But um and there's not a lot else out there for me trade wise either. I was talking about the pound as a potential short, but it's very it's just drifting downwards. There's no I haven't really had a signal yet, so what I will do, because there's not a lot to talk about, is I'll get my FX book up and this is how the month has gone so far. So this doesn't include, obviously, the euro that's still open. And I think it's going to be open um, into June as well. So it's there it is, negative 5.91. Uh, and that was three losing trades. That was the Aussie dollar. That was a sell trade. The pound yen was a sell trade. And the USD yen was a buy trade. So uh, there it is. Obviously... You might be thinking, Scott, Euro really collapsed. You could have closed out. I don't really trade like that. You've got to sort of let things uh, do the course, so to speak, when it comes to trend trading. And, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's not for everyone. Obviously, I know I, the, it seems the flavor of the month and whatever is definitely lower time frames. Would you sort of say kind of, I mean, do you get any questions about, I've had a few questions about it, like how do I make quick money, um, this and that. <laughs> yeah, it's just about consistent profits. If you can get a consistent 2% a month, you mm. know, and then you just say, and then you're making 24% a year, that's yeah. pretty big. Um, you get a lot of people, you know, scammers telling you that you could be making a lot more money, which just, I mean, it isn't the case. If you were making, if you were making 2% a week or these sorts of things, I mean, geez, you'd be, you'd be running a head, you'd be pretty high up in a hedge fund pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah. You got to, everyone, you should understand 2% a week consistently is, I mean, that's pretty with like it's one hundred and four percent, like a year. You know, you you know, one hundred percent. You're making over one hundred percent a year, doubling your account uh, exponentially. You know, you do that over a few years. Just head over to Goldman Sachs, I reckon. Yes, like yeah, the people doing that won't be advertising on LinkedIn and emailing you about it. They'll be like working, like you said, for a, a hedge fund. So I, I did make that scam video and what I'll do I've actually got a few key examples and I'm going to include those I'm going to update the video just so it's good to give everyone an illustration of what a, a classic scam looks like um, you know I haven't seen FX Karen Perry speaking of um, scammers because she's really good like that to be honest so um, yeah maybe she got closed down we'll see but Definitely be careful, guys, because obviously Connor and I were showing, you know, real results and everything like that, and it's good to have an understanding of what, you know, and I, we're not in the markets all the time, so, and it's more the methods we have, it's less screen time, more get on with life. So, obviously, this month, my pound yen was, was not a great trade, so, but the other two were okay and acceptable, so... If you take those into consideration, it's a break-even month with the euro still running. But again, there's not really a lot to talk about. You know, sometimes you're going to get a couple losers in a row, and you just have to sort of deal with that. You can't just because then, I mean, if I had if I just closed things down like that, I would have missed the euro. So you've just sort of it's a good example month of you know having a not a great start, but still. You know, if you see a setup and it meets the rules, you definitely have to take it. The pound yen was a little reckless and, you know, sometimes you get rewarded for that, but then sometimes you shouldn't and that's what happened there. So, but no. I think it comes down to what your sort of tolerance is for risk and, you know, a yeah. lot like, hey, yeah. it's not like you wouldn't recommend that to someone, like just keep at it because it depends how well you know yourself. If you can sit yourself yeah. down and say, am I revenge trading? Is yeah. this a part of my risk management? Uh, that's a little bit different than if you were teaching a beginner, I believe. What do you, Would you agree with that statement? Yeah. Especially if you haven't done a lot of back testing and you don't know what to expect and you're just sort of yeah, jumping you don't in know, here. Yeah. Well, you don't know what a drawdown is. Yes. Yeah. Like... um. You've got to, yeah, for me, the rules are, you know, I can have up to 6% is, and then I, you know, so, um, 
because I, I think I got into the euro before the pound yen. So you've got to sort of understand that and definitely have a cutoff point and be aware of that. So definitely don't just, you know, jump in here and there everywhere and be in like 10 trades and then be down 20%. That could get, <laughs> which can definitely happen. So yeah, you've got yeah, to exactly. be, you know, cautious that. And, you know, with the back testing, um, you know, Forex Tester 3 works really well. And it's not that expensive. I've had a few questions about it because I put up a thing on LinkedIn. But um, there's a link in the description section as well. So please just, you know, I know it's a little bit of money, but... I know there's stock market stuff and they charge you a few hundred a month for the data. A month. So it's like, wow. How much? It's like 200 US dollars a month for good quality backtesting software for um, oh, yeah. like the US stock market. So you can get a whole bunch of stock tickers and then do what we do. But um, it's definitely, if, you, if you're new to Forex, you'll find that it's different in the stock market. Well, especially lower price stocks anyway. It's very big on patterns. And, you know, support and resistance is very key as well. So, but um, I've put a link for Connor's channel as well. I just remembered I, I have done that. So, he, you, you put out a good video on identifying support and resistance as well. So, that can help the beginner trader understand that because that's very important too. Yeah. You know. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. No, that's all right. But, um. Is there anything else? I mean, what are you? What What are you like the, to finish the month with? Are you about break even? Yeah, no, I'm I'm two percent down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's... I mean, unless these ones go, unless these ones go well, I mean, last uh, month I was four point eight percent up. Yeah. So yeah, this month I'm two percent down. So I'm currently uh, in four point eight percent realized profit for the year. Yeah, that's good. That's good, guys. So I mean, it's only. Well, that's about a percent a month, really, because it's mid May. May's done, so that's uh, not so yeah, bad. Yeah, well, it was now because it's uh, oh, it's down six. now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, yeah. you've just sort of, you know, there's still a lot of time in the year, guys. If you're in similar positions than us, um, you've just got to always be ready, though, because I mean, if you just say, uh, obviously, if you 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 haven't lost enough money to stop trading, and you still sort of, you know, hit and miss, hit and miss, you know, that next trade could be a really good one so it's important to just be calm and if you are in a winning trade let it let it go let it really run let it do its thing but um in regards to setups currently as well nothing to really touch upon the pound us dollar there's there's no go there the us dollar is very volatile right now so um i would be cautious i'm i just don't see a signal at all it's very sideways but um Anything else to add to finish up? I didn't no, see the. No, I think that's. I think that was good. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, Connor. Thanks again. And thank uh, you, guys, happy trading and bye for now.